Hi everyone and welcome to the next edition of Holden's Got Your Back mini-series. I'm Victoria Huang and I'm here with Jeff Mitchell, welding expert from iCar Australia. Hi Jeff. Hi Victoria. So today we're going to be looking at different styles of welds, in particular spot and plug welding. So Jeff, who should be completing welds? Any technician that's undertaking any structural or non-structural repairs you should have a good understanding of the steel type that they are joining together and what type of weld process should be used to join those two steels together. It's also vital to note welding and metal fabrication are serious jobs that only a trained technician should carry out with proper welding safety equipment. Protective clothing, equipment and practices are all recommended to protect technicians when welding and this includes welding helmets, safety glasses, leather gloves, weld jacket, leather boots and particulate masks. No matches or lighters should be kept in pockets and always keep a fire extinguisher nearby. So now that we know who should be doing welds and how to protect ourselves, what's next Jeff? Next would be for a technician to start understanding how to control an arc length and to be able to see the weld puddle. If you can combine those two things together, you'll end up with a good quality weld suitable to do structural repairs on motor vehicles. Okay, are you, are you able to demonstrate that for us? Absolutely, let's go into the welding bay. Okay Victoria, we're in the welding bays. Now that I've got most of my safety gear on, I'll just give you a brief explanation of what travel angle is and what work angle is. So travel angle is the direction that you're actually laying the weld on the plates. You can pull it backwards or you can push it forward. Work angle is the, where the wire is actually pointing to the weld joint. Plug welding is unique within itself as your travel angle and work angle is 90 degrees equal. Uh, the big thing with plug welding is to have a very short stick out, otherwise you're likely to bridge the top plates. So why is it so important to have the correct gun angle? The correct gun angles will affect the heat in the weld puddle and will affect the penetration that you're going to get at the end of the job. So if you'd like me to do some demonstrations, I'll put the rest of my safety gear on and if you'd like to pop out of the welding base, I'll bring some samples out for you to have a look at. When making a plug weld, make sure that the plates are tight together. If they're not tight together, you'll chase the edges away. Short stick out. So we have a good head size, we have the sink in the middle that says it's shrunk and we turn it over and we've got really good penetration. Our travel angle for this plate will be running down at about 45 degrees. Our work angle will be about 40 degrees into the joint. That'll place the weld bead on the seam. So if we use the wrong gun angles and wrong travel angles on the same settings, this will be the outcome. So you'll see that we have two different types of welds by changing the, the actual travel angle and gun angle. So when we turn those over, you'll see the difference in the heat effect zone that we talk about. Being a nice tight heat zone, and being an excessive heat zone. Okay, we've just stepped out of the actual welding bays where we were doing fusion welding. This is actually a spot welding which is known as squeeze type resistance spot welding. A different process to actual MIG, or otherwise known as MAG welding for plug welding. Spot welding works on resistance more so than a fusion through a weld puddle. If a procedure calls for spot welding, we need to fully understand the settings that need to be programmed as far as steel type, coating types and metal thicknesses. So I'll do a demo on these two plates that we have here and See the result. And that's the outcome of resistant spot welding. So we've done some practice plug welds in the welding bay. We've done some practice squeeze type resistant spot welding. The next stage that we need to go through is destructively test these welds to see if they're going to be good enough to apply to a vehicle structure. Okay, Victoria, we've done these welds. I'll show you how we do destructive tests. What we're testing for is actually the core strength of the weld. That's why we twist them. 
So I put them in the vise. Once we're in the vise, we twist it up and around. And you'll see that one there is actually pulled straight out of the top plate through the hole. The reasons for that, head size is too small. And the other thing this one doesn't have, if you look at the back of the base plate, shows only very little heat mark, no actual penetration. This is another plug weld that we have done. You'll see on the back of it, it has a raised area showing the penetration. We should get a good result out of this. turned out to be a good plug because of the fact it's pulled out a nugget out of the base plate. And that's how a plug weld should test up. Resistance spot welds. They look nice and neat, look like they're going to do the job. We'll put that in the vise and we'll do a destructive test on that as well. These should pull a nugget out like the MIG plug pulled out as well. And as you can see, we've got tear out that we need to hold the structure together. I said I'd show you the difference between your gun angles as far as work and travel angles go. These two welds here, same settings, but they have different actual work angles. Same travel angle, they were both pulled down, but the work angle, that was on a 45 degree, and that was 90 degrees. You can see the different outcomes, along with heat effect zones. So that's what we're after, a very tight heat effect zone. That's an excessive heat effect zone. Thanks, Jeff. That was really interesting to see how each weld performed under destructive testing. It just goes to show that you, when you look at a weld, you can't just assume that it's going to be a good weld. Until you do destructive tests, you don't know if it is actually going to work. We've looked at plug and spot welding today. So at Holden, we also get a lot of inquiries on MIG and MAG welding. Can you explain the differences between the two? MIG welding is when you're using an inert gas, and MAG welding is when you're using an active gas. So when we weld steel with steel wire, we're actually doing MAG welding, which uses an active gas, carbon dioxide mixed with argon. MIG welding is when we use an inert gas. So for steel welding, we're using an active gas when we get into silicon bronze and aluminium welding, we're actually using an inert gas. So the mag, um, the gas in it that's active, helps create extra heat in the weld zone. To ensure a successful repair, Holden recommends carrying out research before starting your repair. And remember, the only place to get Holden authorised procedures is from Holden. You can access Holden repair procedures via Holden Collision Tech or for subscription access, visit ACDALCO TDS. For any other inquiries, email holden.repairinfo at gm.com. Thank you for your time today, Jeff. That's no problems. ICAR has all the information on the ICAR website about our weld training and certification that we complete. It's part of the professional development program that we offer. That's where technicians can further their knowledge of the industry so they can perform a complete and safe repair. And finally, we'd like to thank Chisholm Institute for allowing us to use their wonderful facilities today. Thank you for watching and remember, Holden's got your back. <laughs>